back to Simply Share Share. I am so excited to be back live. It has been a while, but for good reasons. I've been cooking up some new things on the channel, including a lot of lifestyle and personal growth content. And I am so thrilled because today I've got two amazing women. I'm like literally like having amazing vibrations in my body right now because I'm so excited. Um, I've got Jenny Triansky and Julianne Ensu. I hope I said that right. Joining oh. us today. Hi, ladies. Hi. <laughs> so, so good to have you guys here. Now, I had this idea. How long was this? Like about a month ago or so um, where I just thought, you know what? I love these ladies so much. It wouldn't be great for the three of us to come together to have an amazing chat about our businesses, what we're doing. And it's interesting because I was honestly thinking about like, what can we do? What can we, what's the takeaway? What are the tips? And then it just sort of rolled into what is actually happening behind the scenes and all of this honesty and rawness, realness kind of came out which kind of brings us here today. So we are going to be talking about the ungraceful pivot because all of us have different stories. And even though right now when we're talking, it's like we've been best friends forever. We actually just <laughs> have come together for the first time this month. Like, and we'll share our stories shortly. Um, but yeah, this is live. There are some amazing people who are joining us right now. Taro, I love you. Um, Urban Empire One, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and you know what? We are going to take you through this whole thing live. So if you're just joining us for the first time, make sure you're signed into your YouTube account. That's the way that you can interact with us live. There's going to be lots of moments where you can chat with us. Actually, just just Put your comments in and we'll get to it as we go. But there's so much good content here. Um, and then please also be kind because it is live. The technical gods, I hope they're on our side today. The sun is shining. Um, but yeah, there could be some glitches, but it's okay. We, we are all professionals. We roll with the punches. And I hope you get every moment, every second of everything that we're going to share with us today. So um, quick wave everyone, because we were just so excited. We were actually all dancing just before we went live. Um, and I actually just wanted to share just the fact that Jenny and I have known each other for over a decade. And when did we meet? Oh my gosh, what was it like? At least probably like about 12 years 13 ago? years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 13 years ago, um, which totally dates me. But yeah, I'm over 40. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that. And uh, 13 years ago, I was an art director on W Experts Challenge. <laughs> I think it was on Slice Network in Canada. <laughs> Jenny, you were a producer. And uh, yeah, we were just starting our careers in television. And we have just like moved away in the sense of not working together, then coming back. And if anyone who's joining us for the first time in television, you work together with people so closely and then you go away and then you come back and you're like, oh yay, I get to work with Jenny again. So um, she and I have worked together so many times and this is actually the most meaningful project that we're collaborating on today. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that you're here. The thing that really spoke to me when we sort of reconnected over the past year or so was the fact that you you just like you notice everything whether it's good whether it's bad and you are able to pull like the best out the best of what is happening with someone um, and also just allowing everything to come to the surface and this is why i think it makes you so good at what you do right now and i'll let you introduce what you do um, because there's so many layers and everything, but I love that about you. It's the rawness, it's the realness, it's the honesty. Every time I've talked to you, whether we're having coffee or anything, it's just so real. So giving you a big kiss, but Jenny, I will <laughs> let you tell everyone who's watching today what you're up to. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Oh my gosh, I don't there. really know there how to you do are. that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so, I knew, I think I also knew like we, we were deeply connected beyond just working in TV. And so I'm really happy that um, 
we're doing this today and um, can't wait to see what we'll do together in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I had a long career in TV. I was um, a television producer, director, writer, and then eventually a production executive at a national network. And um, that was my first career. And in 2017, I made a huge pivot, life and work pivot. And now I am a professional, a certified professional coach. I'm a co-active coach. Um, and I run a personal development uh, coaching business. So most of my clients um, have a lot of self-doubt and um, just like me, you know, because that is human. We are human beings. Every human being, even the most confident human being um, has self-doubt. We all have a doubtful part, an inner critic. So I do a lot of inner critic work um, and I... I work with my clients to motivate them towards their goals and towards the changes they want to see in their lives, motivated by self-compassion instead of inner criticism. Um, and it's that's basically how I've been able to handle all of the pivots and the challenge and the change in my life. And, and it continues. So I am building my business still right now. It's I'm continuing to pivot with the times, which we'll get into a little bit afterwards. Um, and yeah, I'm also a writer and workshop and group leader, um, which are new income streams that have sort of unfolded uh, over the last year during COVID. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here, Cher. Thank you so much. That is so amazing. And it's funny too, because I, I obviously know what you did um, in television and personal um, development coaching, but the writing, like I didn't know you were doing that. Like it's just, you're so multifaceted, absolutely. Um, Thank you. And I know that you, well, uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I'm so happy that you also brought us together because I, I just met Juliana um, and I'm still getting to know her and getting to know like the three of us in this new dynamic. Um, but Juliana, I just want to say as, as I get to know you, I'm so blown away by your effervescence and your presence. You have a presence, a confident presence that feels like it's noble. Like you, you show up and you embody the sort of the part that you've chosen to play in this season of your life. And it's really remarkable. So um, I'm excited to keep getting to know you because you like, you really do have an energy that I, I just think is incredible. Aww, thanks. Well, Juliana, I'll let you tell everyone watching today what you're focusing on um, because it's pretty amazing. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> so my name is Juliana. I'm here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So I'm a little far removed from you ladies, but we made it work. Um, so I actually, what I do is I have a fashion line. So I've transitioned my artwork into apparel. So like pocket squares, which transition into scarves. Yes, I have bow ties, socks. Oh yeah. Cher Cher is wearing hers. Mm -hmm. That's actually flowers from my garden that yes. I handpicked. I don't know how else you'd pick a flower. So I <laughs> I took the flowers and I pressed them, like dried them. You know, when you were like in grade three, it was like so fun to dry flowers. And then I photographed them. Anyways, that's her piece. Mine's uh, actually like a piece of artwork on canvas. Um, and then I've also transitioned it into face masks. Of course, uh, the pandemic hit and nobody was really wearing pocket squares, which was the initial initial reason for the company was to have art in your pocket. So my pivot as I kind of launched that aspect of my business was, okay, um, no one's wearing pocket squares anywhere in the world right now. <laughs> so let's transition into face masks. But if I take a step back and tell you kind of how everything kind of unfolded, it was really, um, I, I raised my two kids. Well, raised, I mean, they're still young, but eight and two. And I had been a dancer my entire life, a uh, performer. And taking that much time off, you don't really, after being a mom, just jump back into going on stage or being on Broadway. It's just not going to happen, honey. So um, <laughs> art was just another way of me expressing myself. It was the next stage of self. Here I am. I exist. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, I had all this artwork in the basement and my husband's like, it's too much. Like, there's too much, babe. Can you just take it on the lawn and like sell it? I'm like, no, I'll do something with it. Just give me a hot minute. <laughs> so he kind of propelled me into what are you going to do with all this self-expression? Like literally the basement has like 300 pieces of self-expression. There's nowhere to move. So I was like, okay, give me like a month to figure it out. 
So that stress or that little moment propelled me into being like, okay, how about I take it, my pieces and get it out there in the world in a bigger scale to kind of be a fashion line. So that was me reinventing myself. And I guess as a performer and growing up as an artist in general, you're always reinventing yourself. So that transition for me was easy to now play the role of a designer. I don't have a background in design whatsoever, but I think just being a performer and entertainer my whole life, playing the part was a very easy transition. And that's why hearing your stories and your transition is so fascinating to me because it's a little different how we've all been able to have the confidence to transition in, in different ways. But mm-hmm. let me throw it back to share, share. <laughs> that was like long. That was, like, <laughs> that was awesome. But, um, but how I met Cheryl was again, you know, me taking kind of um, challenging myself and kind of branching out of my own little Calgary, Alberta lifestyle. And I, I met you through Ali Khan and, well, and Jason Krell. So basically I launched my apparel line and in Calgary, Jason and Ali, they have um, their blog called the style guys. So I wanted to drop off some of my new socks to them. And he was like, Hey, well, I'm doing a Halloween special with simply share, share. Maybe we can like, you know, give a, have a giveaway for one of your pieces. I'm like, sure. This is my in. So I like ran home, grabbed a bow tie, another box of socks. I'm like, here, take it all. (laughs) And so then I watched the segment on Halloween and I was just so drawn. I I didn't know who Cheryl was prior. I'm sorry. But now I realize I have seen your shows, but I was watching her and just like, you're, you just really radiated to me. Just your authenticity was so refreshing as a TV personality, right? Because that's what you, you are. And I was like, I need to reach out to her. And so I did. <laughs> and here we are five months later. Five months? Long. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe it has been five months. Thank you so much, Juliana. That's so sweet. Like, I had no idea when you were watching that something – was going to happen after and so far it's been really magical and um you know i think everything happens for a reason uh and just like super brief because i could talk about every single job or yeah project that i work on it's just way too long but i went to university for interior design and i totally thought i was going to be a junior designer and work myself work work my way up and uh, I met a makeup artist and she said you would be really good on a show like an HGTV show why don't you enter a contest Um, so I did and I made it to the finals um, at least just to get on the show and then I got kicked off which was awesome (laughs) because it just like kept me really (laughs) humble Um, but then that was sort of how I started my TV career I just got these amazing opportunities and I worked my butt off. Like I really, really did. I was like, I'm going for it. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to get this gig. And it just sort of spiraled into like a career of almost, I don't, I want to say 15 years, um, being a designer on camera, TV personality on HGTV, rest, um, any uh, food network as well. Um, and now becoming a, a YouTube creator, content creator, um, And so it's funny because I thought all of these things were kind of all these different hats that I was going to wear forever. And I just felt really disjointed. Like I I was like, okay, well today I'm this and today I'm that. And I don't know, it it didn't really feel good. And so now that I'm a mom, because my daughter's two years old, I have decided that it is time to bring everything together, everything that I've learned to come out in this new sort of like person like I it's it's kind of Juliana when you're talking about going on stage and, be, and acting and all that stuff I am stepping into this new role um, and so what I'll be focusing on I'm really excited to tell all of you who are here and watching today that next month I'll be launching a brand new business it is called Nueva Rosas um, which means new rose in Spanish it's really meaningful to me and my family and it is a sort of everything coming together i'm going to be focusing on digital content creation video production but also um, being able to give back to the design world in a more meaningful way helping you achieve things um, that you want to do and how to make your space and your home 
doing things in a more conscious way. So that's super, super exciting yeah. for me. Um, but yeah, everyone out there who is watching, I want to know what you guys are focusing on right now. What are your, the projects that you're working on? Um, what is meaningful? Um, and if there's any questions you have, make sure that they keep on coming because we are here for you. Um, and yeah, just again, shout out to Urban Empire. Oh, Urban Empire One says, I should have won that show. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, that show, um, I was what, 26? And I didn't know anything. I, I didn't even have anything in my portfolio. So thank you for giving me confidence, but there's no way I would have won. <laughs> <laughs> I was just fun. I just laughed a lot. Um, oh. So yeah, we will get to anyone who comments shortly. Um, keep those comments coming in. Um, but I think what's important, I think what a lot of people really want to know is what the messy and ungraceful is. And I am mm -hmm. going to hand it over to you, Jenny, because you have an amazing messy story. It's very positive, <laughs> but it is so real and raw. I feel like everyone needs to know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I have, I just believe in embracing the messiness of being human, period. And I, you know, now working with clients, that's my biggest message is we're human beings and perfectionism is, is a lie. Perfectionism is, is a self-sabotaging mechanism. So as a former perfectionist, um, you know, I'm, I'm always battling um, these very human parts of myself, my own self-doubt, right? My own fear. Um, but when you when you allow yourself to really go inside and and look at what feels true to you what resonates with you that when you allow that to become bigger than the fear that's when like anything is possible in your life so but it's still messy because we're human beings right and and life is complicated and we can't control everything so um i had a 20 plus year career in the television industry. And just like you, Cheryl, my identity was very tied to that. Like I, I was a TV person and I, I was, that's who I was. Um, I couldn't really see any other way, but I always knew that there was a piece of me that kind of wished that, or felt like I should have been in a helping profession. Um, and back then I kind of told myself, well, that's not what I chose, you know, that's not what I chose. And um, this is where I'm at. I'm a, I'm a creative, I'm a TV person. Um, I was a producer director, like I said, for many years, I worked on um, some really big top shows um, for HGTV and W Network and Food Network. And I loved it. My first career was, was sort of like a passion driven career, I call it. But now my second career that I've transitioned into is a purpose driven career career. Um, but back then, like, you know, after I had my daughter, I have a seven year old now. Um, but after I had my baby, um, I, you know, took a year off from mat leave, I came back to my job and something felt different. Um, the Canadian TV industry had started to change, but something within myself really felt different. I felt like I wasn't connected anymore to what I was doing. And the more I let that drag on, the worse it got. And I found that I, I got to a place where I, I, I felt a toxicity inside of myself and I, I wasn't showing up in my life as myself anymore. Um, and not just at work, it was carrying through to my home. Like I had this little adorable girl who I love so much and an amazing husband and I was really unhappy um, and really unfulfilled. And so um, I actually worked with a coach. I didn't know what else to do. I was desperate. I really wanted to quit my job. Um, wow. I felt, Kind of swallowed up by the by by this sort of sense of disconnection within myself, um, but I couldn't do that because I I have responsibilities right, and so I I decided to do something proactive for myself. So. I hired an amazing coach. Her name is Donna McLean from Agents of Way. She really helped me change my life, um, and she did say to me early on, "You're meant to do what I do." Wow! And I was like. You know, instead of feeling like, wow, you just gave me my answer, I actually felt kind of angry. Like what came up in me was something very uncomfortable. Um, and I was like, what? You're telling me that I should quit my career that I built, you know, in the TV industry? And she said, I'm not telling you anything. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I see. I'm telling you what's true. You're already showing up in your life in this way. You are already showing up as a helper, as a deep connector, as a person who, 
pulls things out of people and helps people through things, which, which was true. And I knew that that was true. But the block for me was, okay, but what do I do with that? And how do I translate that into a, a career? Like it really felt like a wall, like a block, um, because my belief was, I'm not a business person. I can't go back to school. I am just a creative. I don't know how to be anything else. But when when my coach pointed out to me, like you already you already are being this thing, right. this helper in the world, it was like I couldn't deny that. So and like for me, everything was very small baby steps. Um, and the interesting thing is that a lot of people have told me recently that it looks so easy. You know, wow, you just you, that you made that happen so easily. It was such an easy transition, and it happened so quickly. And I will tell you that did not that is not how it felt to me. Um, that's not how it was. So for me, step one was I had to get myself out of the 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 environment I was in that was creating a toxicity within myself. So I ended up taking um, a one-year contract job um, in digital, um, working with digital content creators, where you and I got to work together again, Cher. Yes. I was working with Canada's top YouTube creators, and so it was and it was awesome. It was so much fun, and it was really nice to. What it taught me was like I knew that I wasn't taking a job that was going to be my next career step. Yes. But what it was was getting myself again inviting change, giving myself space, learning that I could actually, seeing that I could learn again, that I can start from ground zero and I'm capable of learning. Um, and I was learning from some like pretty young colleagues who like they knew way more than I did. You know, I had to really check any sense of ego. Um, and I learned so many skills in that job. I didn't know it at the time, but that I'm now using as I'm building my coaching business. So taking that step had such an impact on where I'm at now, but I couldn't have known it back then. So everything I've done to get to this point of having a full-time coaching business happened in steps. I took that one year contract, that job sort of gave me enough space that I could go back to school at the same time. So I, I did my core coaching courses over six months while I was still working. Wow. I start, I took my first client after the second course, I know I couldn't have planned this, you guys. Like, there's no way I could have mapped any of this out. I really followed what felt right to me every step of the way. So I took my first client um, while I was still in my training. Other people started asking me if I would take them on as clients. And all of a sudden, I had a coaching business. I didn't even plan. Like, it kind of just unfolded because I trusted that I was going to figure it out as I, as I go. Um, and so by the time the year was up, in that contract job, I had a coaching business that I, I was coaching clients at night. Um, a lot of people said to me, how are you doing this? You, you have a full-time exactly. job and you have a young daughter in kindergarten. And uh, how are you doing this? And guess what? I, I, I never felt tired. Like, I mean, okay, sure. That's not true. I felt tired <laughs> a lot of the time. You're a mom. <laughs> I, 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 I would coach clients at night and I would get to those calls and they would energize me because wow. I was doing this fulfilling work that, that felt right. I was like, and it kept confirming this, I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. And so when the one year contract was up, um, they asked me to stay at that job. And I really wanted to do the certification program with the school where I trained, which is pretty intense. And I said, I'll stay, but let, can, will you let me work part-time? And I know, I didn't know if they were going to say yes. And then they did. And so that next step, that next piece kind of fell into place. Um, and these were scary moves. I had, it required pay cuts. You know, I went from my, my, my executive job at the network, took a pay cut to go take a, 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 you know, my transitional job, took another pay cut when I went down to part-time and there was a lot of fear, right? Like, how am I going to make this work? Um, and again, I had this commitment to just figuring it out step-by-step. Step. If it ever felt like we were in danger zone, I knew that I would, I would make a new choice then, or I would figure myself out then. Um, and so, yeah, it ended up being this beautiful, um, kind of synergy of, of experiences that I couldn't have ever imagined when I started out, when I started out, I had the sort of overall, um, sense of, I want to help people. I want to work in a helping field and, and have a, a new, a new part of my life, a new career. I could not have predicted how it was going to unfold. And see, um, and so, yeah. 
It's so important to be able to connect with people around you, whether your best, they're your best friends or people who are somewhat afar, um, because you do not know this from looking at their Instagram. Like, and I, and that's the thing, Jenny, I have your number, we connect, you know, a couple times a year, but I had no idea that, you know, you were working part-time, that you were going to school. Like, it was just very surface because we're all so busy in our stuff and things get messy. It is so hard to connect. And I guess, you know, especially during the pandemic, it's actually really nice now because we are all home. <laughs> we're not like rushing to taking the kids somewhere or whatever. Like, it's just, it's just a moment now where we can say, hey, like, I am so proud of you for, for everything that you've been doing because I've been watching you from the start. It's, it's, it's been amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like we can all relate in so many different ways. You took a lot of the words out of my story, <laughs> um, but I'll have to retell them. But, um, but yeah, I, I think this, this is so great. And I, and I can already feel like you have a glow about you like right now because you are doing what you were oh. meant to do. Thank you. It's also because I just put on makeup for the first time in probably a year. Um, <laughs> so, you guys, but um, no, honestly, I do. I will tell you, like, it's still hard, right? Like, I'm still building it. It's still hard, but I do feel I am. There is an inner glow because this is what I'm meant to do, and I'm so happy that I didn't. That I doubted my doubts. That I didn't believe that belief. That hard belief. It felt like a hard belief that, like, I can't. I can't do anything else. I'll never be able to. Well, everything that you said so far basically means that you can. Um, and uh, Juliana, I know you have some definite mess, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but you you I are do? able to kind of translate everything into this very graceful um, dance almost. That's how I kind of look at it. Um, but yeah, why don't you let us know what what your uh, messy bits are? Well, what are my messes? <laughs> Oh my God. I'm like such a multitasker. It's insane. And I would say that's my mess. I'm everywhere now, honey. I just started my YouTube series. I just started a podcast. I'm trying to get onto Amazon. Like, listen, everything Jenny said, like I wrote down so many notes, you have to get uncomfortable to shift. And I think that was such a great thing. If you're comfortable, you cannot shift. And I've talked to a lot of friends and they're like, how are you doing what you're doing? Oh my God, you're doing so well. Like I'm looking at your life. It's like, girl, <laughs> I get up and I have to play the role to become the part. Love it. Like if I had it my way, this would not be happening. I'd be in pajamas. <sighs> so all I'm saying is you have to get uncomfortable. This isn't comfortable. Pajamas are comfortable. You have mm. to get uncomfortable to shift. And we feel we're supposed to be comfortable. If you're always comfortable... How are you going to ever enjoy the sweetness of life? It's going to be like this. You got to go to the gym, work out hard to feel good. You have to like learn something new to apply it and go through the hardship. So I feel we've become almost like it has to always feel good. And I think we need to like um, embracing the messy. You have to embrace the uncomfortable. So Jenny, that was an amazing thing that you said. And there was one more thing that you said that really resonated with me. I love the word resonate. It's like the yeah. 2020 word of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like that you said, we all naturally want to help. Actually, I think, Cheryl, you may have mentioned this. I think it's like a joint. Yeah. Naturally, we want to help. And how does that translate into career? Because I think at the core of everyone, we're trying to find that fulfillment as what am I doing that's good and helpful? So I look at my situation with, you know, stepping into fashion again, like kind of blindly just flowing with it because it felt right. And I let, I love color and craziness. Um, but what am I doing that is helping people? Okay. So that's where I kind of took a step back because you do want that balance. And through the chaos of getting, throwing myself into design and learning all this new stuff and being go, go, go and not taking a breath for myself because I went full throttle. Remember, I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. So I went, Phew. I was so ungrounded, like so ungrounded. So what happened was I ended up taking a Reiki course for my own sanity. I'm just learning for so this, this I the took first my, time. <laughs> yes. I was like, I'm going to go crazy if I'm like this with no break. And I think you guys have gone through that too, because 
in your industry, like producer personality, it's nonstop for you guys oh, yeah. too. So I just mm -hmm. enter that space and I'm like, I am going to die. Like, I can't do this. So I almost forgot how to stop. Um, so I took a Reiki course with a Reiki master and it changed my life. And what it taught me was it's okay to stop. You need the brakes to press go again. And mm -hmm. when I do Reiki and I'm healing people, I'm literally channeling something beyond myself. I know this may sound kooky to people, but if you have a chance to take Reiki, it's actually interesting. Most people who end up taking Reiki are at a very low point in their lives and they don't know what else to do to feel connected or grounded. That's those are the people who actually seek it out. It's not, oh, I'm a healer. I'm gonna add it to my rep to my repertoire. No, 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 no. <laughs> Usually the people who are on a very low frequency or feel completely off or lost seek Reiki. And through helping others, you're literally healing yourself. Mm. So Reiki is such a powerful gift and I'd recommend it to anyone if you're home right now and stuck and feeling lost and don't know where to go. Learn the art of healing others. You will heal yourself. And through doing Reiki, not only did I find grounding, balance, but I've also cleared the channel for more authentic creation. Love it. That was long again. I'm a Gemini. I can go on for hours. <laughs> but I would just say, if you could take a takeaway, um, get uncomfortable. Life is very messy and you have to learn to laugh it off. You have to laugh through the mess. Like, just laugh it off. Like, okay. Quick story, share, like quick. Like, quick story? Yes, two seconds. Like one minute, sorry. Okay, <laughs> so this guy, this guy found me on Instagram. His business partner sent my info. All of a sudden, I'm in a meeting with the silk supplier for her maze, Victoria Beckham. What? Chanel. Okay, no, dead serious, okay? He saw my video on Instagram. His partner's like, oh, you should check out this girl. She's doing pocket squares and socks and bow ties, like, hello. So he contacts me, full on meeting with this beautiful British gent mm. talking about his business and how they could be the next supplier for my line what? of pocket squares. In walks my husband behind me to grab his laptop off the freaking table in like, I think a t-shirt and maybe boxers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like this. I hope he can't see behind my camera. I don't think my husband understands there's wide lenses. He doesn't get this. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not this. I was dying. dying. <laughs> that's the mess. That's so oh my god. That's the mess. And you have that's to laugh because then that becomes a story. Maybe nothing will come out of that, but that's the story. And that's you have yeah. those are the gems of life, really. It's just the experiences. I totally I actually agree. think that's one of the that is actually one of the benefits I think of like these COVID times that we've been living through. It feels like sort of the lines like putting on the professional thing really um I don't know, we can see the mess behind it a little bit more. We could see the human beings a little bit more. Um, even a lot of my, I have clients who work at some big companies and they're sharing too that they're getting to know people in, in sort of like more human ways, just peeling back the layers, you know? So I love that he walked in in his underwear. How human. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't in his underwear, but for me, it was like sloppy enough that I was like, basically I'm putting him in boxers. I'm sure he had pants on. I just like to <laughs> amplify things. Cause he's gonna watch this and be like, "Are you serious?" Okay, sorry. you're a storyteller. <laughs> you're amazing. That's awesome. Oh, thanks, girl. I'm so so excited for you. I think this is gonna be so interesting. The ride is going to be so much fun. <laughs> um, and for me, I'm like, I want to add you guys to the mess. Actually, I'll have you all three of you. Let me see one second. Cause I love when all three of us are together. There we are. Can I mention one more quick thing, Cher? Because yeah. um, I think this is something we talked about when we were kind of starting off this series, which I think is going to be a series. But we were talking about not being afraid to ask for help and mentorship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. And I think that's sort of rolling into my mess, which was essentially, you know, I got pregnant. I was so excited to have a baby. It was the one project, project in my head, that I had never, I was, I had never obtained until my 40s. So I, yeah, basically 40, 41, that's when I had my daughter. And um, prior to that, I was a workaholic. Uh, I 
you know, everything was grooving, everything was great. My husband and I were like so super happy. If I wanted a job, it just sort of came into my life. Um, and then of course, the birth of my daughter, everything stopped because I put so much focus into her, um, but it actually caused a really big imbalance in my life because I didn't pay attention to anything else. And I know you guys can relate because you're like, I just need to keep this little human being alive. That's all I need to do. I didn't take care of myself, pajamas all the time, maybe a robe, me, like never dressed up. This was me going on camera every single day, dressing up, showing up, I, nothing, everything's gone. Um, I would stare at social media, I would get angry because mm. there was a part of myself that was gone. And then, you know, as a YouTube creator, because I was like, well, this is great, I can do things at home. I can create content, I, I can be creative in that sense. But as she got older, about six months old, I was like, I can't, of course, everything gets harder. There's a new skill that she's learning and uh, I had to be more present. So it was just so off balance because I would never, um, like I couldn't continue to do what I was normally doing, whether it was design clients, whether it was YouTube content, um, you know, there was the off chance that I would just exactly like kill myself, stay up all night to get one video done. But what it was doing to my soul was like, I just felt so empty. I had no creativity. There were so many blocks and, you know, I did go through a very blue time in my life where I was depressed, anxious, um, and I am anxious all the time, but this was a very, very dark time for me. And who do you talk to? I mean, you can talk to your friends, of course, but there's some deep, deep issues or deep um, wounds that I clearly needed to heal. Um, so there, for me, it was like I could, I didn't know how I was going to get out of this mess because it was just getting, like it was just becoming so overwhelming um, and I really had no guide. There was no guide. No one really told me about how motherhood could get you so into a totally different headspace. Um, and you're just sort of just trying to survive yourself. Like you're trying to keep your child alive, but then you're also trying to survive as a woman, as a, an entrepreneur. And so my business, I don't know, it just wasn't what it was. Um, Jenny, I can totally relate to you where you're like, I took a pay cut, 100%. Where is that next paycheck coming? No idea. Um, how to plan? Can't even, I, it's messy. It's so messy. And then what ends up happening, uh, I know for myself, was that even when I got excited about something, excited about a project, um, I just had no energy left. So it just got, it took so much out of me to even get there. And then of course, you know, all you keep thinking about is I have this reputation, I have this career, I have this Instagram that I have to keep up with. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I think this is gonna sort of transition into our pivot point shortly. Um, that is where I had to kind of pull back. And actually, Juliana, the Halloween special, um, mm -hmm. Jason, Jason's an amazing connector. Okay. So I have to yeah. give props to you because he also connected us to, um, an amazing tarot card reader her name's page of cups. And mm. she lay all these cards out for me. I had no idea how this was going to unfold, but she basically said to me, Cher, you gotta put your head down. And I was like, okay, whatever, <laughs> put your head <laughs> <I'm done>. down. <laughs> this is your time to turn inward. Um, mm. and really focus on yourself. And I, I looked back and I thought, whoa, this is going to be a year and a half of me not focusing on myself and I had to break the pattern. So, you know, if anyone out there is feeling how we are all feeling, because I feel like you can connect to at least one of us and if not all three. If you have any messy moments, put it in the chat right now. We'd love to hear from it. Uh, from you. Um, but as we were doing that, I'm going to um, turn it around to our lovely ladies because we should just briefly talk about our pivots because um, we are getting to that point because I know we could talk forever. But I really want mm -hmm. to have everyone hear your pivot moments. So because pivoting is mm. so possible. There's change in the horizon. And Jenny, you know, if you can briefly just sort of sum up what your major pivot point is, because the mess to me isn't messy. It's, it's all about growth, but I'm not going to take any words from you. Just 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. go for it. Well, I just wanted to like kind of um, coming off of what you just said, it takes a lot of, it takes facing fear and pushing through the fear, seeing it to push through fear. You can't push it down. You actually have to bring it up. Like you said, you have to go inward. You have to, you have to really look at the fear. Um, and then you have to make a choice to get uncomfortable, which is what you, which is what all of us have done. Yes. Um, and that like, that is actually what courage is, you know um, it's, and like, it takes a lot it takes a lot to actually get off of autopilot. So even, you know, Cher, you had an amazing career, um, but even that was, you know, you were on sort of an autopilot just like I was. Yeah. And that's where we get stuck in our beliefs. So it does take, um, it takes sort of saying yes to discomfort and also saying yes to what I realized is I, I was making a lot of assumptions. Like when we're in fear, um, we make a lot of assumptions about what we think it's going to be like. If I take this step or if I take this risk, ugh, it's going to feel awful. Like I really thought to myself, I'm going to have no money. I'm not even going to be able to afford to go buy a latte at a coffee shop. Like that's where my mind went. Like I'm going to suffer. I'm going to make these changes and I'm actually going to suffer. And it didn't turn out to be that way at all, at all. It's kind of like, you know, when we actually open ourselves up to change, it's pretty amazing how we can surprise ourselves, right? Or how life surprises us. Um, so I just think like through going, going through any pivot, any change, my biggest advice is don't make assumptions or check your assumptions. Um, for me, I mean, my biggest pivot was this big career pivot. I think, you know, some people were pretty surprised um, because I was, I did have a job that, you know, a lot of people looked at as being, wow, you're like, you've made it. Um, and, and I did love that job for a long time, but something had changed within me. Like I said, it was like, I did not feel aligned with my own life. And when I really looked at it, what I, who I was and what I was doing didn't align with my, va my core values anymore. Um, so that's why I just felt so off kilter. Um, um, and so, yeah, that was the biggest pivot of my life. Wow. And I'm really proud that I did it. And it has shown me that really, like, we're so capable of change. Um, but then I, you know, I spent a couple of really uncomfortable years building a business. And I, I went full time um, with my business and my coaching business in the summer of 2019. Um, and it was going really well. You know, I was building it slowly. Um, I actually did have to kind of redefine what success looked like. Like people would say, how's your coaching business going? And I kind of didn't know how to answer because right. I, when you're building it, you haven't you haven't gotten to some big point yet. You're just sort of building it as you go. So I had to really look at like, what is my measure? What are my measures of success? And what are the realistic measures of success? And when I met those, that's how I knew this is going well. Um, but then through COVID, I've had to pivot a thousand times. You know, when the first, when the first lockdown happened, I all of a sudden felt like I was holding on to this business that I had built like with a trying to hold it with a tight grip, but now I had a six year old at home who I had to um, support through school online. Like, and it really threw everything into, that was probably one of the messiest moments of my life. I felt like a lot of other um, parents have felt, I felt like I was failing everywhere, failing at work, failing at home. I couldn't get a grasp on anything. I was very overwhelmed um, and I was very, I was very disappointed, you know, like people were talking back then about the grief that came along with sort of losing what was. And I felt like that I really felt that big time. Like I was, I had just built my business. I had just done my first corporate workshop at a very big company. And I was like, this is my future. I'm going to keep pushing with this. And then all of a sudden I was homebound. So I've had a lot of pivots, um, even through this new sec this new career, like my second career, I'm still building it. I'm still transitioning. Um, and I'm still meeting my fears and meeting my doubts all the time. Right. Like it really is a roller coaster. Um, but now I know I just have an inner knowing that I'm on the right path. So it's about when my fears come up, it is about kind of like knowing that they're there, acknowledging that they're there bringing in self-compassion, reminding myself what I'm made of because yeah. I now can, I know my resilience and then moving forward from there. Wow. So uh, I think I, that's, that's that's this is amazing. I just want to um, have a shout out to Kylie. She said, I just quit my career kind of 
out of left field and Cher to the rescue cheered me on and I was excited for me. Even when I was terrified, I just blew up my life. Um, and then she continues saying, having someone excited for me for that change was immensely helpful in pivoting my focus and not being so down on myself. Mm -hmm. Oh! Yeah, finding those cheerleaders. Kylie! Kylie. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know what? I, um, I, we had this conversation on my birthday, which is funny, it was in January. And I was like, you know what? I am, I love helping people. It doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter if I don't have time, even if it's for five seconds, we have to be there to support each other because we, you know, as women, we are wearing way too many hats. And this is such an important time for us to feel supported, to feel heard. Um, so Kylie, I'm so, so excited for you. Oh my gosh. Um, Juliana, I really want to hear your pivot point as well. Well, I'm in the pivot. <laughs> I'm in it. I haven't even win pivoted it. yet. I'm like this. <laughs> oh, um, so, I mean, I could say that, you know, my pivot was being a mom and I was pretty good at it. I mean, I made really good meals. I'm a really good cleaner. <laughs> Um, I was really good at getting the kids to places on time. That was boring. I mean, listen, after <laughs> my, my first child got such a different experience as me being a mom compared to my son. He's like been in day home from like, I'm ready to work. See you later. Here's the baby. <laughs> so my pivot was, I guess, being kind to myself that I felt like I was a failure as a mom because I didn't put as much time as I did in with my daughter as a, like a stay at home mom versus my son who is like, mom, I don't even know who he thinks his mother is. I feel awful. And I was talking to my friend about this because I admire the stay at home moms more than what I'm doing. Cause I'm like, wow, you guys are insane. <laughs> like, insanely amazing to be at home and sacrifice all of you for your child. I'm in awe because I know how hard that is. So for me, my pivot was really putting down the mom hat and saying with my second child, it's okay to be the other version of me that I've waited so long to put out there, like really. And that was a hard pivot moment because it was a choice. Do I want to raise my son like I raised my daughter, stay at home mom, you know, do everything perfect? Or do, am I ready to press go on my, like Jenny said, like what was in my heart and my gut and my being? And that was a very difficult decision um and i decided it's okay for me to press go on what i want for me yes um and that that's hard that's a really tough thing to do so i will never judge a parent for dropping off their kid at a day home when they're one do you because you have to be happy and fulfilled and your kids are going to feel that shift and that energy and that lightness like jenny right we looked at you you feel light you like seem yes. light you're oozing light. And the right other now. thing I have to say, Juliana, like what all three of us are doing are modeling, we're modeling for our children that it's not okay to, like to self-sacrifice to the point where you don't even exist anymore or or what the fire inside of you is totally dimmed. I don't want to model that for my child. So you making this choice is actually showing your kids that you matter too. Everybody matters. Oh no. Right? <laughs> oh, she's a girl. <laughs> I, it Kendall happened. Heart. We Kendall made Kendall it heart. happen. She's crying. I, oh, yeah. Oh, Jenny. Sorry, baby girl. Um, I didn't even know that was my pivot. <laughs> that is your pivot, girl. I didn't even know, but it flowed because I was like, oh, and then I'm going to pivot in this direction. And that. No, it was like literally saying, I'm not a mom. I'm now a fashion designer. Hello. <laughs> and own it. Um, I mm -hmm. know that we're going to be wrapping up very soon. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my pivot, which is so similar. I'm going to add you guys too, because I love you guys. One second. <laughs> if anyone wants to know, I am the tech girl today, all day, every day, which is actually my pivot as well. So I was ready to get back to work, but I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and then of course the pandemic hit as well. So I realized I have a beautiful home studio. Thank you to my husband for helping me with all this tech stuff. And we decided let's do lives like this. This is going to be great. We can do it from home. Um, but what I had to do, I had to basically go back to school. 
Um, but it was all online. There wasn't really a course out there. It was very much like, hey, how do I learn this new software? And I had a buddy, Jason, <laughs> he was my live buddy. And we were literally like trading notes. I would watch RuPaul's Drag Race and then we would watch these Ecamm. Um, that's the software that we're using right now. I'd watch these tutorials, these videos. We would share notes. We would go to these conferences together and we would learn. And I felt supported in that way because who else am I gonna go to school with right now? I'm 40, like, come on. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm older than that, but in my 40s. And um, so I was doing this and we kept trying, we kept trying. We had technical issues. We didn't know what we were doing. We were trying to promote, we didn't know. Like I was working, we were working with Jeanette and we were all lifestyle experts trying to figure this out. And so many people weren't ready for us, weren't ready for lives. They're like, I don't know if lives make sense, but you know what? For me, the idea that you're connecting with your audience instantly, they can get answers from you, they can talk to you, you feel that energy. Um, but after about six months, I was like, wait a second, no one's ready for this. Is this a failure again? What's happening? I don't understand. And I got really down on myself again. And of course, it kind of got to Christmas and you know, I, you know a lot of people feel really down on themselves because it's time to reflect. And for me, the biggest thing is that I realized I had to look back at what I achieved that year, even though it was the pandemic, even though, you know, maybe the lives weren't as successful as I wanted them to. I felt like, you know, Jenny and I, I Jenny, you've talked about this before, where you got to take things in stride, take things in sort of like steps. And I learned this from watching my daughter. She's going, finally going to um, nursery school soon but it's baby steps. And I realized by focusing six months of my life in this live means that I am going to be ready for showing up for this new business. And it allowed me to slowly chip away at all the blocks, all the walls, all the you know, negativity around me. And I invested in myself on December, I wanna say like 27th. I invested it in my own, in my, personal growth and it has been the best thing ever. Did I have all that cash in my bank account to just be like, oh, I'm gonna just throw it away at all these courses and whatever? Probably not. Um, was it the best, you know, I didn't, I had to, I almost had buyer's remorse for two seconds, but I was like, no, 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 this is not a bag. This is not high heels. This is not a piece of clothing that I'm gonna throw away later. This is an investment in myself and yeah. that allowed me to pivot. I really, I, I know that you guys have known me at least, you know, whether it's 10 years or five months, there's obviously a noticeable change, at least in my attitude, in my outlook. Um, and we'll have to do another live soon about like how all this like crazy positive web of awesomeness is unfolding. But really for me, that was my pivot moment. It was saying, I exactly have to fill my cup. I have to remind myself I'm not just a mom. I'm not just a designer. I'm not just whatever. I am Cheryl. There is more to give. Um, and it's allowing me to um, become and step into this new role as mentor, as coach, as teacher. Um, and I am just so excited um, and everything totally makes sense now. And I can see the future. I can see the legacy that I want to leave for exactly for whether it's my daughter, for the world um, and thinking globally. I, you know, a lot of our conversations as we we're preparing for this live was all about like dreaming and like looking outward outside of your circle, outside of your friend circle. This is why I think this is also mm -hmm. great. Like, you know, what I yeah. normally say, Hey, Juliana, you should meet Jenny. I, I didn't know how that would make sense until yeah. this topic came up. So um, yeah. yeah, if anyone else wants to just sort of have a little chat, leave anything, last comments for us, um, feel free to do so, you know, because this is the time I'm going to put all three of us up again. Um, yeah, this is, this is one of those I love things what you where... said about, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I loved what you said about taking the time right now if you're feeling stuck and you don't know what to do, to take that time to invest in yourself and learn. Learn. Because that really is that going to help you with that pivot. Sometimes people are so scared to take the first step and they freeze up. Also, in another point Jenny made, you know, you have to take that first step and then everything will flow because there's so many people who are learned, learn in school. You need a plan before you execute. 
Yes. Sometimes the hardest thing is just start. Just start. Je- like Jenny, right? I that was kind of like your I think thing, too. thing too, Carol. That like you said before, it's actually in my tagline of my business: go inward. Mm-hmm. When you when you are lost, your answers are not out there, mm-hmm. right? You you can lean on p- other people for support, but your actual answers they're not out there. They're in here. They're right. inside. And you have to find yourself again, right? Especially for those of us who are have been so tied to an identity, right? We forget, we actually forget who we are. We, we put these labels on ourselves and you were able to, and so was I, really strip the outside stuff away, go inward and figure out who am I? What do I want? What matters, right? Absolutely. That's where magic happens. It, it really, really is. And, you know, I think before we would hold success in a way that it was exactly, what are the numbers? What are your subscriber count? What, how many people liked your comment? Throw it all in the garbage because it doesn't matter. Really, when I remember, when I decided to like pull away from social media, even if it's like for a week, whatever, that time for me um, allowed me to vision, create visions um, for what I really wanted. And every single person who I believe is successful, and it's not about, how much money you have. It's not about the subscriber count. Who is successful? Every single one of them meditates. Every, the, every one of them takes time for self-care. Every, it, may, it might even just be five minutes, but they do it. So find someone who you really connect with, whether it's a mentor, a friend, whatever, and find out what they do. Because if you start to apply some of these things in your life, for sure, you'll start to see change. Um, but yeah, Jenny, any last little tips that you want to share with uh, anyone watching? Yeah. Well, I just, there's something really important about dreaming. I used to be afraid to dream, right? Because, because I was such a perfectionist and a control freak. I thought if I dream it, then if it doesn't come true, I'll be a failure. And now I've kind of reversed all of that dream vision, even the hairiest dreams, just like allow yourself space and time to vision them and kind of play with them and plant some seeds and give yourself permission that not every seed needs to germinate, right? But you can't make something happen if you can't see it. So I think like the dreaming piece, this is very new for me. I used to shut myself down from dreaming. Now Mm -hmm. I let myself dream about like everything big and small. Um, And just real, and I also really, I've come to sort of expect not failure. It's almost like redefining the word failure. Failure is learning and it is baked into the process of change. So yeah, those are my, that's, that's the biggest, my biggest takeaway, I think. Thank you, Jenny. And Juliana, any last words before we wrap it up? (laughs) Yeah, I would just say the same thing, you know, you're laying the seeds out. Don't expect a quick result. But also um, meet new people outside of your bubble. Like you said, Cheryl, like if I didn't meet you guys, if I didn't extend my branch, like again, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, people. <laughs> Look it up on the map. Trudeau doesn't even remember who we are. That's how far we are, okay? So I'm an entertainer in an oil and gas industry. And what COVID has done for me is that everyone's stuck at home. Like, oh my God, look, let's take a hot second. I'll keep it short, but listen. If you guys didn't have COVID where you live, I would have never met you guys. You guys were go, 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 go every morning. In a weird way, the pandemic has allowed me to really have a further reach through these Zoom meetings, you know, take the risk to say, hey, I'm nobody. Can we talk? And it was interesting because I feel, I mean, Cheryl, talk about this. You were at a place where you were becoming so much more open and receptive to people as well. And I just came into your life at the right time that you responded that we could talk about this next step. So I would just say as a, like a takeaway for people watching, um, extend your network, meet someone new. That's my story. You never never know. know. Absolutely. And share your dreams with those new people. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what you don't know actually share your dreams because you have no idea who knows who, who can connect you with who. And I really, I, I see that now, like the more open you are, the more doors, doors open. It's just, it's just the it's way it is. How, that's just how No life one's is. perfect. There's no such thing. Absolutely. And I just want to um, say that Michael shared a comment, which is basically always be working on your rose rate of self evolution and i really mm-hmm. hold that close to my heart because that is the reason why i decided to change or actually create this new 
business, which is Nueva Rosas. Um, and thank you, Michael, for helping us today. Um, I just want to show Juliana's beautiful creation. Um, she sent this to me, and I realized today there's a message. Um, and I'm going to read it on here because it's so beautiful. It's like, you just notice the colors. It's so beautiful. But it says, if space and time were obsolete, we would be against a blank canvas of possibility. And I think that is the most beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say thank you to Jenny and Juliana for joining us today. I feel like this is the beginning of some really beautiful friendships and and collaborations and new projects on the horizon. Um, and yeah, I hope that everyone today got something out of this amazing, amazing session. Um, and make sure to look out, um, check out all of uh, their info. It's in the description below to reach Jenny and to reach Juliana from PS Make Me Famous. Um, there's so much more to come and I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. <laughs> Say bye, Thanks, everyone. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Bye, Juliana. Bye. I miss you already. We'll be back <laughs> soon. See you all soon. <laughs>